It's three minutes past eight. Shabana Hearn, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, trips. I'm well. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. A little bit concerned about... Um, I know. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. So a lot of people won't have seen this, right? The footage obviously did the rounds on Irish football Twitter immediately last night. Katie McKay was injured about 86 minutes into the game. At that stage, it looked like Arsenal were home and hosed, and they were... Um, having beaten now Bayern Munich 2-0 in the second leg to win 2-1 on aggregate. Um, how bad was the challenge? Um, it was unfortunate how it looked. And I, and I actually think I was watching the game with Rusha, my sister. And at that point, I went, oh, oh, she actually looks like she's struggling a little bit here. Now, we were joking that, well, if we know Kate McCabe, then we know, the way we know Kate McCabe, she loves she loves a little roll about the floor. Um and then actually, when we saw the replay, we thought, oh, no, she's actually really hurt here. Uh, and I think that's the first time I've seen Katie go off uh, in a long, long time. Um, and she looked so you could tell that she was struggling. Um, and yeah, it, it looks like it looks like a sore one. Um, and the challenge doesn't look good. Uh, but fingers crossed she gets positive news today from her scan. Yeah, in fairness, she, she obviously gets carried off the field um and then later there's a, a, a photograph of her on mm-hmm. Twitter. She's smiling with the with the boots. We've got it up there now. Uh, she is smiling and the boot is on and you're kind of hoping, I mean, I know the, the adrenaline after a victory like that because you're through to the semi-final of the Champions League. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed she's actually all right. Yeah, I mean, listen, massive night um, for the Gunners get, getting through. And I think you're right. I think adrenaline will probably have seen Katie through last night. Um, and, and smiling and, and having the crack. But um, if I see another boot, honestly, um, ahead of this World Cup, uh, I'll just start pulling my hair out now. But, I mean, she uh, when I saw the boot in the picture, I thought, oh, that's not... I didn't expect to see that. Um, but I, I know as much as you guys do, she was... She, it was sore last night. She did send a message saying um, her foot was very sore, but she will have a scan today, and um, the club should give us an update in due course. But, fingers crossed, it's just... It's just, I mean, it looked sore. I saw a picture. It looked like a bad bruise and a and, and a and a little cut. But sometimes I think that could can that be better? You yeah. know, Instead of mm. muscle, you know. So I, I want to take a positive from that. But uh, I'm no doctor, and uh, and I don't know um, how how she'll be. But I, I imagine this morning her, her foot will be pretty painful. Yeah, our amateur doctors, most notably uh, Colm, was like, oh, it looked more like a, a a contact injury as opposed to ligaments. We're like, oh, good man, physio Colm. <laughs> um, but actually, you know. In, <laughs> We've watched a lot of football. We've seen a lot of these injuries and fingers crossed. Um, somebody was fingers comparing crossed. it to Evan Ferguson. Obviously, we had footage of him in mm. a boot in the aftermath of the Liverpool game and he was grand. So, um, okay. yeah. Mm. Does it, that's does it... what we were hoping for. And and that's the thing. I mean, I remember when, when Rusha had broke her foot at, in Finland in that, that playoff game, that was the same kind of contact kind of thing, like the stud to the foot. But actually, when I saw the picture of Katie's, I thought, oh, that does look quite a little cut and a bruise and I thought okay maybe that's more of a positive thing to take from this uh, but we will see we will find out in due course fingers crossed for her uh, Kathleen what kind of performance was it before that because it looks like from all the reports Katie McCabe was having an absolute stormer oh completely I mean the setup for the Black Stenia goal was beautiful like it was a classic Katie McCabe pinpoint cross you couldn't help like you'd have to try hard to miss off that sort of cross um, I think Arsenal mm, not that they'll be disappointed because obviously they went through but they probably should have scored a couple more goals like they definitely had the opportunities I think for them it was a much more complete performance than the week before in Bayern Munich in that they were actually able to get goals which has always been something that they've struggled in these Champions League games where they've put up a good performance but they haven't been able to score those mm-hmm. goals great to see Frida Madam scoring as well um, she kind of had a bit of a, a strange patch there where she was really really good when she came in after Mead Miedema getting their injuries and then tapered off a little bit and is kind of coming back up on a high now. The big thing for me after last night is that I think it kind of leaves Arsenal in the same position that Chelsea were last week in that they had a big performance, a great game, everyone was on a high but lost a couple of big players injuries so like chances are Katie no matter what the injury is isn't going to play this weekend against City. Kim Little also went off after 11 minutes and that's probably going to be a big worry for them Shaban. Yeah, I mean, and they've got Manchester City and Manchester City are fresh off that 2 nil win over Chelsea um, and are just on this brilliant form at this moment in time. Um, I I agree with you, Catherine. I don't know how both of those players will be back and available this weekend. Um, 
he's going to have to turn to his bench and they're going to have to dig deep. I mean, the beauty of it is that at Boreham Wood, um, they know that ground so well. They know that atmosphere so well. They know what they have to do against Manchester City. The thing is, in my, my personal opinion, I think Manchester City can sometimes play the best football. And where Arsenal have sometimes been lacking, um, especially at this point in the season, um, Manchester City are doing by the bucket load and that's banging in the goals. Um, so they'll have they'll have their work cut out for them um, this Sunday. Um, but fingers crossed they can get a win and see them push up that table again. But last night, huge win and, and could almost be one of the highlights of their season so far. It's kind of funny, I think, when you look at the title race and obviously it's so close at the moment and you look at every other team. So you look at City, they have Bonnie Shaw. You look at United, they have, you know, Latoon, Alessia Russo. You look at Chelsea, they have Sam Kerr. They all have their kind of defined goal scorers, whereas Arsenal don't really have that so much this year. I know like Blackstenius was supposed to be that player, but I mean, I think last night they had 14 shots and seven of those were on target, seven of those were off target. And that's probably a good statistic for Arsenal this season in terms of their shot ratio. They're very good at getting the ball, holding the ball, but they don't really have that like out and out goal scoring ability and in the same way as the other teams is that something do you think that's going to hamper them a little bit in this running because I think they've City and then they've United next and they still have another big game left to play before the end of the season so like they have quite a difficult run in yeah they've still got I think they've still got Chelsea second last game mm, and then they've that's got Villa on the last game of the season yeah I, I completely agree with you however what I would say is by this and now I feel that they're starting to come Good ever so slightly. I think Stina Black Stenius is that four and four, possibly for her, starting to find that little bit of confidence, just starting to hit the ground running again and just finding that confidence in front of goal. I think Caitlin Ford, um, you know, you can rely on her for a few for a few goals. Um, and she's looked so brilliant this season. And I, I can sometimes think, okay, just stick striker, you know, uh, Caitlin into that striker position. Um, and you can rely on her for goals. Frida Manham, when she has games like she has last night and she can hit those rockets, you never know what you're going to get. But the thing is, there's inconsistencies there um, in that forward line from, from Arsenal. Um, and, and that's where the problems lie. You know, they're not getting goals and they're without Viviana Miedema and Beth Mead where their goals were coming from. So uh, for me, I do have to look and go, you give them that injury grace, especially when you go up against Manchester City. I went to the North London Derby last week and they were a perfect performance, but I don't think you can look at, no disrespect, look at Spurs and say, I well, you know, you can really take um, huge positives in that performance because everyone's been taking points off of Spurs. Manchester City are 14 games unbeaten now. You know, Arsenal are going to have to really dig deep and finish their chances, every single one of them they get. You mentioned the, the Freedom Adam Rocket there, Shaban. I mean, if I had my way, we, we would just spend 20 minutes talking about that goal and I'm, I'm just waiting for the Athletic to do or someone to do a deep dive on the intricacies of, of every single move in the build-up. Even the Leah Williamson flick was just ridiculous. Maybe it was the camera angle, like just the satisfaction of how it went in, but it was some goal. Yeah, no, I mean, she does that. Frida, Frida does that how many times? In fact, she, she's a bit like Katie McCabe in the fact that she can just pull off these worldies, you know, now and then. And and Katie nearly had one last night as well, didn't she? She went off on that lovely little run down the left and and I thought, oh, and it just went just went way to the post. But, you know, Frida Manham, I think, has had a good season. And as you mentioned there, she's had this slight dip. Um, but when she's on form, for me, she's just one of the best, you know, and she's a big physical player as well. Um, and yeah, that goal was absolutely terrific. And then also she had that beautiful moment. I think it was, was it Palova crossed it in and then Frida Manham did that back heel, you know, to mm. Caitlin Ford and Caitlin just, she should have just dinked it over the keeper, but she put it over the bar and I was just like, oh my God, that would have been such a beautiful moment had that come through, but um, it didn't. But Frida Manham had a great game last night. Whatever it is, those players took to the Emirates last night. If they bring that, okay, they might be missing Kate McKee, they might be missing Kim Little. If they bring that to Manchester City the weekend, they've got it all. You know, on their day, they can beat anyone. Is this a bit of a surprise? Like, in the in the build-up, people were saying, oh, they don't think they're actually going to win the uh, tournament outright. But now you're in a semi-final, you've got to be thinking, well, why not? Do you know what? I work closely with the UWCL and I have seen some outstanding performances. Um, and it's... It's tournament cup football it always changes things, but Arsenal surprised me that last night. And I think if they could, if they get Wolfsburg or PSG, whoever that may be, we'll find out their fate tonight. 
oh, it's going to be it's going to be a huge game. You know, we know what Wolfsburg can do. Some people are tipping them as the winners of the competition this time round. PSG have been very, very good, but they're still not there just yet. So uh, I don't know what's the kind of side of that draw. You know, I would say if they can get PSG, they can make it to a final and I look and go, wow, what a season. What a season for Arsenal. And I don't know where they go in the league from here. You know, uh, the league is so tight at this moment in time. But as we've mentioned, you know, Chelsea, okay, they've dropped the points once again, and that shocks me. Um, and Chelsea will be putting everything in their game against Leon tonight, but they might have tired legs at the weekend once again, and they might further drop points. But Arsenal have got City, you know, and I look and go, if they can, if they can put all the focus into the Champions League, get to a final, you know, it would be huge competition, but it would be a huge moment for that squad. They've already picked up one piece of silverware. They've got the buzz for it. Um, they're a good squad. You know, they've got a good manager. They've got it all. You know, Arsenal do have it all. Okay, we've mentioned it earlier on, they're lacking in goals, but I think they have so much to offer and it's a great team and I imagine. I mean, what an incredible sight that would be. Yeah, and imagine that, like, uh, Katie Taylor and or Katie, um, <laughs> Katie McKay was linked with a move away. It could be one of those great ironies where she ends up staying and they win this and it's the cementing of a great relationship. It could be. I mean, it absolutely could be. You know, those moments winning silverware will change anybody's, you know, thoughts and or, or make them feel where they want to be. Um, you can imagine that. Um, we'll wait and see what comes at that point in time and if anything else materialises uh, come the summer. But, um, you know, Katie's fo- she's got a lot to focus on. You know, I, d- I do think I look at being close to the, some of these players and I look and go, there's a, there's a hell of a lot on them, you know, um, to, to win each game, to climb back up the table, to stay fit, to focus on a World Cup and... You guys, I'm, I, I want to be full Irish, right? I'll, I'll, I'll say that right now. But the fact that Rush and I were speaking about this, this last night watching the game, she'd watched back the Republic of Ireland, the national anthem, um, and she's just like, imagine this in Sydney, this moment, you know, at playing against Australia, this national anthem. And I think, wow, like all of these players are fighting to get on that plane, you know, to be there in Vera Pau's squad. And, you know, then moments like last night, Katie picking up that knock, you just... you. You feel for them, you know, you feel for them. They really, they're really giving it everything that they've got. There's a lot on them. And I just want them to focus on being the best that they can be without putting too much pressure on themselves. But, uh, you know, we're wanting them to win Champions Leagues and climb their way back up the table and go to the World Cup and get out of the group. You know, it's, it's a lot on these players. Um, and uh, it's going to take a lot of, a lot of, um, I think, therapy to to be ready for those big big moments and it's kind of interesting you were saying about like what would this mean for like Katie in the summer but I think like generally this I think this is the sort of week that Arsenal will look back as like defining on their season depending on how it goes because at the moment like they're in a semi-final for the Champions League technically still in that race in the top four and they have to play City, they have United coming up, however that semi-final goes. If they don't make it past the semi-final, or even if they make it into final, don't win. If they don't make top three, how are they going to hold on to like a certain level of player? Or how are they going to attract the certain level of player? Like As I was saying earlier, in terms of them maybe not having that out-and-out striker in the way that a lot of other teams do, or have that very established, can get the goals, get the, the dirty goals that maybe you're team is down but they strike in the ball and for me this is going to be the most interesting part of Arsenal's season in terms of the players they're able to keep you know like Minima's contract was only a year extension there's a lot of other players whose contracts are coming up for a renewal there's a lot of players in the league the likes of Alessia Russo who Arsenal were interested in in January who are also up for contract renewals in the summer who they might want to try and attract in and this could very quickly go from okay we're in a title race we're also in the Champions League race to our season amounts to a league cup and nothing else I know I know listen you're saying all the things I think we've been I've been thinking about in my head you know the last 24 hours anyway and Bayern are a good team and and last night I was thinking well if they don't get through you know Bayern are solid and you can never underestimate the Germans, you know, they're they're so experienced and they get the job done. Well, Arsenal were the better team last night and Jodis Edeval had done a press conference last weekend and he did say on their day, on our day, we can beat anyone and they can and they've actually shown that at several times now this, this season. I mean, I was at the Conte Cup final at Selhurst Park. You know, they, 
they wiped the floor with Chelsea, you know, and I would never have said that even at the beginning of this season when Arsenal had Vivian Amida and Beth Mead, I was looking and going, there was something about Chelsea. But listen, they have their own mountains to climb as well. They're wanting to progress in the Champions League. They're wanting to win the league. They're looking for another domestic quadruple or whatever that was they got a couple of seasons ago. Everyone's doing their own thing and Manchester City are just on this run. Manchester United have surprised everyone. Aston Villa are even doing bits as well. I mean, I don't think they close the gap and get to fourth, but, you know, the, the league is just strengthening and strengthening and strengthening. And then you get to these competitions like the Champions League, like the Conte Cup and those moments for, for, for more silverware. Now they've got that buzz from the Conte Cup final. Now they know that they can beat Chelsea. I think it can go right down to the wire till the end of the season, you know, to those games, that that second last game, that last game of the season. It's one of the most exciting title races we've had in the WSL. It keeps it so much more exciting for fans and for anybody wanting to get involved um, and support women's football because you've not just got Char Chelsea Arsenal. You know, it's changing all of the time. You've got all of these teams now just improving and strengthening and catching up. And that's, for me, what makes the summer even more exciting. Are Arsenal going to nick Alessia Russo? Is she going to come? You know, will Chelsea get in a bidding war for that? What will Katie McCabe do? There's just so much more to focus on now. And and I think that's what's the beauty, beauty of this league. It's just only going one way now. And, you yeah. know, Arsenal are, Arsenal are important in, in this league. So, so important. It's good timing after um, last summer as well. Can we can we just go back to that moment where you're uh, sitting on the couch watching the anthem? Because yeah, everybody's been remarking about, I think it was, was Elisa Lamb did the anthem? Yeah. Mm. yeah. She was amazing, like absolutely amazing, and they should just book her for the anthem. Book her for Sydney. Do well, you know what I mean? Not a bad Get idea. Get on that plane. <laughs> I'd say she'd be delighted. So, um, sometimes the players love that stuff, but sometimes they can feel like, "Ooh, I recognise now." So obviously, it sounds a little bit like Grish is wrestling with that at the moment, the importance of it, but also just leaning in and enjoying it. How do you? How 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 do they all make sure that mm -hmm. it's um, it's just a positive as opposed to pressure? Because like. I don't know if you if you ever the best bit of advice I ever got was like a, a wedding speech it was like everybody in the room wants you to succeed everybody watching the match wants this team to just succeed and enjoy it how do we make sure that they feel that mm. Mm. Um, do you know Rush is, she's um, for me she's one of the most like measured in our you know the way she thinks the way she tries to better her thinking the way she works on mindfulness is so important and I think it's because maybe she's a smidge older She's been through the mill and injuries. She was out of the WSL and had to find a way back in. You know, she's had a, a rough run of luck, Risha. So I, I like how she focuses and how can I be better? How can I make sure that I'm thinking the best possible thoughts to better my experience? And, you know, she speaks about the Ukraine game that Ireland had in that playoff where they nearly got to the Euros. And she remembers, she recalls everyone being so nervous that day. She's like, we weren't ever used to being in this experience. We've never been this close. And everybody was on the edge. You know, were, we weren't prepared for going into that game for the nerves, for the pressure, for knowing that we were one game away from the Euros. We'd never been there before. Emma Byrne, who I heard on the show um, earlier on, or, you know, she had been in that position with her squad at the time. They were close to getting a playoff or did maybe get a playoff. Um, and, and she said how that, that now she looks at that moment and the game against Scotland in the actual playoff for the World Cup, Ireland were ready. You know, that they had they had dealt with those nerves before. They knew the job that they had to do. They knew the occasion. And it was having that experience of losing a game in that high pressure moment that's helped them get to this point now. And and I think that's just such a a great way of thinking. You know, the fact that you don't lose, you learn. You know, they've learned so much from that experience. They've got through the playoff. Now they're going to go to a World Cup and they're going to open it. And this is to be the most watched sporting event, I think, in history. And I look and go, this beautiful country with so many incredible sports stars are going to open up the World Cup and just set an example for so many. And hopefully, touch wood, my sister and Katie will be there and all of their friends and Vera. And it's just going to be this beautiful occasion that everybody enjoys and just savors that moment and go, God, we've done it. You know, we've done it. We've made it here. Now let's just be defensively solid and just try and get a couple of goals and Aye. beat Australia and get out of the group. You know, Handy. it's going to be so hard, but enjoy it. <laughs> you, know? you always made me forget that we actually had to play a match after all that. Oh, yeah. I was like transporting myself to Australia the moment of hearing the national anthem. I was getting the goosebumps and then I was like, oh yeah, we actually have to play yeah, Australia. No, we have to play, them. Have to play them Matildas. Good luck with that. <laughs> we could just That'd cut it great. off after the national anthems and just be like, what a great moment. <laughs> let's end it there. <laughs> In fairness, their anthem is also pretty good. Um, and how is Risha's injury? at the moment 
she's she's good. She's really, really good. She's still got a bit of wrap around her knee, um, but she's on. She's back on the pitch. You know, fingers crossed. She makes it to the squad this weekend. They're playing Chelsea. Aston Villa have Chelsea. Um, again, Aston Villa having this great season, and I look at her and go, God, it's a shame. You know, you've been injured so much of it, yet your team's flying but again she's positive you know she's really positive she's hoping that she's going to get to Vera Powell's camp because they go to America I think on Monday don't they they go to Texas on Monday um so fingers crossed she makes it to that and fingers crossed again she focuses on what's ahead and what's in her control and that is a World Cup um and the the opportunity to be there for Ireland I think is just everything she could ever dream of so she's doing really well she's recovering nicely and she's in good spirits I'm always really interested in that whole uh, evolution of of uh, players embrace of sports psychology and you're talking about mindfulness there are the squad getting helped you know or is it an individual thing more that people go through I believe they have the the option to access sports psychiatrists I believe and sports psychologists I believe that they are there on hand to help them I hope so too <clears throat> because it's such an important thing you know I, I'm we're always listening to podcasts and high performance podcasts and you know the amount of sports stars who say you know, that they needed that help and guidance to to tra- train their brain. You know, they've got the fittest bodies, they're the most trained and focused athletes, but the, the brain's the most powerful muscle. You know, if you're not in control of that, you're in trouble. So it's to strengthen that and to be prepared and to think the right thoughts going into a high pressure situation like that. I hope it's a, I hope that they're all getting it. I hope they're maximizing on it because it's one of the most important uh, skills that you can have. Yeah, well, it's a great image of, of you guys sitting watching the anthem and watching it back and going, that's going to be something that we get to experience. So, yeah, um, yeah br- brilliant to have you with us this morning, Shaban. Thanks a million. As always, thanks for having me. Have a good day, guys. It's Shaban Ahern giving us her thoughts on uh, the Arsenal game last night. You're obviously an Arsenal supporter. Are you feeling comfortable, confident that they're going to go on and win this thing now? Or is this just a bit where you have your hopes dashed again, Kathleen? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Emma Byrne has been saying since like the start of the season that Arsenal are going to win the Champions League. Ooh. And I have laughed at her many a time when she has said this. She seems to know the game. She does. She does know the game, but I just... They, they've burned me so many times before and especially after the injuries and the kind of patch they went through where like they had such a good run of form, so many clean sheets, like banging in the goals and then they took this massive dip and it looked like they weren't going to even make the Champions League places, never mind actually go on to win the Champions League. I think Shaban is right in what she says. It kind of depends on who they get for the next round. My preference would probably be PSG over Wolfsburg. Um, we've had a lot of battles with Wolfsburg over the years, which we haven't come out on top of. And I think PSG are a little bit more flaky as a side. And I think the they're a lot less physical than Wolfsburg and I think that would probably suit Arsenal a little bit more. So I'm conflicted at the moment in that I think we possibly could do something in the Champions League, but I'm concerned that they're not going to make the top three in the league and not making Champions League for next year would be really disastrous for Arsenal, I think, at this stage because there are a lot of good players on the market and they're not going to come to Arsenal unless they know they're going to um, be playing Champions League football. Mm. Money money always helps. Money cures everything. It does talk. Jonas Eidville was referencing the Emirates being like it, there's a realistic vision now that this could be the the home ground for this team. Like 20,000 fans there last night but when he, when he took over that probably seemed fanciful as an idea but now all of a sudden you're like well yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah no it definitely could. I mean I think probably more realistic is the you know you see like a North London Derby or something there and there's mm. like 40,000 it's definitely like I've done Champions League nights I was there when they played Barcelona and there was maybe like twelve to 14,000 I think and I'm probably of the opinion that unless you're getting like that 30, 40,000 in somewhere like the Emirates it gets lost it yeah. gets a little bit lost and like it it still was cool to see the team there but I would probably rather them find somewhere that's like a halfway house between Bournemouth that's like a couple of thousand and the Emirates which is like a couple of tens of thousands I'm like yeah. why can't we have a you know a ground that's like 20,000 that you can sell out every weekend or you can nearly sell out every weekend and then do the massive stuff at the Emirates and It's London there has to be a stadium that would be would be suitable I mean obviously you want it to be close enough to um, where the fan base is Well I mean like Bournemouth is in the middle of nowhere it's literally it's so difficult to get to so anything could be better than that um, Can I just ask you about the, the squad are we expecting any any uh, 
ringers to be coming in at this stage this is this is the last squad really where there's an opportunity for somebody who we haven't heard of that they've been working feverishly to get a passport for who comes in and they get a look at uh, pre-World Cup are you expecting any of that or is the squad basically the squad so the only ones that have kind of come out John Fallon reported back when the team were in Spain that uh, Megan Finnegan the Everton defender and Sophie Whitehouse who's the Lewis goalkeeper were going to come into the squad for this camp those are the only ones I've heard of apart from that there hasn't been any rumblings of other players coming in I think it's interesting again that they're all defensive players seems to be where Vera Powell's mind is at at the moment Um. I, I'm i not expecting any massive surprises. I'll be interested to see now that the like women's Premier Division is back up and running if there'll be any more inclusions from that. Um, I don't know if there will be at this stage. I think like I wasn't particularly impressed with Abby Larkin in, in the last camp, um, but she still is very young. I mean, she's only 17, and I think... For me, it seemed like she was brought into that camp to almost give her the experience of being in the national team setting and give her some game time in that and kind of make it a little less daunting for future years. Uh, Anya Gorman is obviously one of the big shouts from the league as well. So that would probably be the thing I'd be most interested to see more so than do they actually fly anyone in that we haven't heard of before. Unless it's some big name and then we're all going crazy tomorrow being like, Katie McKay who? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> uh, 29 minutes past nine. Kathleen, good stuff. And as I said, make sure you uh, search for Koi Gig in its own feed. You can also get it in the football feed. Uh, OTBIM with Gillette Labs. Get the ultimate shave or your money back. Neon Night Edition available now.